indicators and other important tools for analyzing this sector. Sign up today on TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman singing for Larry Pesavento. I believe Larry uh, had some, some just uh, something, some personal stuff, and he wasn't able to make it uh, this hour. So I'm sitting in. Um, we're looking at the S and P up twenty one point ninety three at forty two eighty nine. Let me just discuss a couple of things here. <clears throat> um, in the Chapman wave, what we like to look for is uh, identify the lowest low bar. And from that moment on, you want to be counting each successively higher peak. And the objective is, once you've got that low bar, every higher peak, it's called a floating letter until it makes a peak. As long as from the starting point, it doesn't take out that starting point. If it takes it out, you have to start all over again. You, you're done with any potential uh, buy signal or buy, buy mode. And what you want to look at is to see it go strongly to an A, then pull back, hold that low, and then start B. At B is where you may, might get an upgrade of a buy signal, taking it to a buy mode. A buy mode would imply that in the Bay methodology, it should go to at least a D. And I use technical indicators for that. And they just sit there. I don't do anything with them. There's nothing to measure or anything. When they cross positive, they positive. When they go negative, they're negative. And uh, as, as it stands right now, um, when you get to that fourth highest peak, alphabetically A, then peak B, peaks have got nothing to do with A to B equals C to D, absolutely nothing to do with it, has nothing to do with Elliott wave. I notate them with alphabetical, uh, with the alphabet sequentially to G. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, each one's higher. Uppercase on the way up, lowercase on the way down. Once you get to D, other things can happen. And that's exactly where we are right now. This is where you can get an instant restart because within three bars, that's the rule, if there is a higher high above D, you can call it an E, but in your mind you're thinking E may be slash A because this could be a brand new buy signal going to a buy mode that can take you to another four peaks high. There's never an H, G is the ultimate high letter. Then you have to look to see if there's a recount, if there's something you missed, whatever. All right, so within that context, where are we? We did this instant restart with this peak D still in a buy mode in the S&P. See this candle, red candle in the daily chart right here. The middle is the weekly, the right is the monthly. And right here, if I can just get this error, I just want to see, can you? Uh, yeah, I think you can see it quite clearly. Oh, that's not, uh, okay. So there's your peak D, one bar, two bars. In two bars, it made a new recovery high. But the MACD is very strong. That's the MACD right there. The stochastic is over 80% is excellent. Over 90% is terrific. It's at 89.81 right now. So it's very strong. That's the reason why that red candle yesterday, to me, was not a really big negative. It was just saying, hey, um, it's a, it's a digestive phase after a spectacular run from the 4,100 level to the 4,300 level. So where we're at right now, we're at 4,289. Let's call it 4,290. And it has to go to 4,299.20. If it does it today, it extends leg F. And if it does it tomorrow, it starts a G. But we've got that instant restart, which says, hey, G slash C. And very often we see... The G slash C go to that D. D is the target price always in the Chapman wave methodology. So with that said, we're in E in the weekly chart. We're only in C in the monthly, and that's still very bullish. The MACD hasn't crossed positive yet, but the nine period has crossed over the 14, and that's really important. And the stochastic is lagging, but it's at 59%. And rounding the on-balance volume in both the weekly, well, the daily, weekly, and the monthly are becoming it's becoming 
very overbought. I never talk about overbought, oversold in any of the indicators except for the on balance volume. I might do it in my price movement, but not in any of the technical indicators. They just give you readings that you have to interpret in, in, uh, in a, a way of either buy or sell. Now, the other thing is this. I wanted to do a couple of things here just because I know that Larry likes to look at the commodities, so we'll do that. But the QQQ had an instant restart. Is this a peak F or is it an F slash B? Look, the 9 is way over the 14. That's really positive. The MACD is starting to weaken, but it's still positive. The stochastic's weakening, but it's still at 86%. That's terrific. On balance volume, the blue line is pulled back. So this says we're probably getting kind of toppy in the QQQs. And the way I'm looking at the market right now, because the Dow has just started uh, about an hour or so ago, it went to a leg seat, went above 33,805. At the moment, it went one penny above that high. It starts leg C. And then, look, the 9 is over the 14. The MACD, this is the MACD, the green and red line, they very strong. The, hist the stochastics at 86%, very strong. On balance volume is lagging a lot. And that just says to me, I think we, make, we do go to a D. It's probably going to be somewhere between, I don't know, we first have to make a peak C. If we go one penny above today's high tomorrow, it extends leg C. And as I'm looking at it, the uh, upside um, is still intact, but look at the weekly chart. You see the chap, the green and red, pink line? That's called the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. Once it goes above, it becomes a propellant zone, but it keeps getting repelled in that little area right there. So that says until the Dow can close on a weekly basis in the 34,300s, that's 500 points from here. I mean, that's a lot. Um, this is still in a an up. I call this a high-level consolidation, making higher highs and so far higher lows, uh, mostly higher high lows and mostly higher highs. It hasn't made the, the leg D yet. And the monthly chart is bumping up against resistance, you can see right there. All right, I wanted to get that out the way. Now let me show you a couple of things. On the very short term, <clears throat> we had just absolutely a fabulous turnaround from the low at about uh, 20 uh, on the E-mini at 42 I think it was 4262s, and across the nine period, the 10 minute chart crossed positive, and we are still positive. And this went to peak A. And what I did the other day, I think it's about a week ago, I said, this is going to become really important. I use a long, narrow rectangle, the midpoint of that. Sometimes, if it's long enough, I say, this is going to become a really important area. Up and down and up and down like a yo yo. Well, that's 4290. We went, we went oh, above it for a while the other day at peak F in the, uh, with the do two doji candles, and we plummeted from the 4305-ish area down to the 40, uh, 4260s, then went sideways, and I typed in this because it came from, I wonder if I've still got it because it was a while back. Um, wow, is that the break already? Yep, that's a break. Dow's up 149, SP's up 21. Uh, there it is. This is where I drew, I drew it from. This is the whole area that was a consolidation between a very narrow trading range, the 920, around about on the 5th of June. I'm this year, 22. We have exciting news, Tigers. This June, Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle will be hosting two webinars, providing insight into his renowned market timing methodologies. On June 8th, Tim will delve into the S&P 500, teaching sentiment indicators, identifying market bottoms and divergence, and so much more. On June 15th, Tim pivots to the gold market, taking a look at cycle analysis, ratio studies, advanced decline indicators, and other important tools for analyzing this sector. Sign up today on TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, 
dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio Tom O'Brien is here to help Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years a frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network at CNBC Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you Tom's daily market newsletter market insights is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Free at one eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Internationally at seven two seven eight seven three seven six one eight. Hi, folks. So let me just show you something here. I was Basil Chapman sitting for Larry Pizzavento. One minute E mini chart up nineteen seventy five. So look how it's, it's pulled back from this peak E in the chap wave. You see the MACD, the way it turned around. But look at this beautiful indicator right there. You see that little blue line? It hit exactly to the minute. It made a little high, and then it comes all the way back down. And what I said just, uh, uh, before I popped into the den a little while ago, I said I'll be uh, doing Larry's show um, hour at uh, 1 o'clock. But I'm watching this, and made a, the uh, one minute made a peak E in the one – peak E and the 10 minutes made it a peak D, a B, and it's still above the nine period moving average. And then I said 4290. You remember, I was just talking about this dash blue line that's just going to stay there for a while because we're going to go above and then we come back. It's going to be really like a fulcrum. It's going to be really important. Well, looking at the, um, looking at the, uh, the one minute chart, look how it's walking the nine period moving average. It's trying to make a cup formation to break above uh, 42.9475 uh, to get to 42.9495. Uh, there it is. So this is just about, it's within a fraction, a quarter of a point of starting a leg D. So that's the one thing. The other is um, this B in the, in the, um, I have been speaking about this for about six months now, and I, I, next week I hope to do quite a bit of work to be able to kind of um, to to at least document. I ha I'm not sure I'll be able to put it on a computer, but I'll be writing down all the notes for for myself, and I'll be trying to uh, implement it in some. I don't know if I can do it on TradeStation or on on Warden or something. Just uh, implementing some kind of a plan so that I can identify with. The parameters are well clearly articulated um, where we get a two-click session. 
how one of the one of the ingredients I spoke about this at about forty two seventies this morning. I said I think we got a two click. Se- I had actually done this a two click session, uh, but I had to get out because of some other things that were going on with the program. Uh, with I just I needed to get out, so I got out. But I think this is a two click session that somehow or other we should attempt to get to a leg C above the forty two in the ten minute chart forty two. 9850, 429875 starts leg C. It's taking too much time. I have a rule of 136 when you're consolidating. One one bar rest is fantastic. Three bars is good, or even on the way down, it's good. But when it gets to six bars, you almost have to restart the new buy signal. So here's the pattern that might even turn into that H, dreaded H pattern. I'm watching it closely. Here's your peak C1. I call this peak C1, C2. So if I was in, I, I'm not in anything right now here, I would have called, I would have said, hey, I'm getting this as a peak C2. I'm getting ready to maybe bail if certain uh, parameters aren't hit. Uh, this is if, if there's a new position, but if you're still long from the 72, 74 area, 42, 72, the, this, the day is still young, anything can happen. But on a very short-term basis, this one-minute chart says, I couldn't even get to a D under the previous E. Not good. That means there's now weakness is starting to prevail in the, in the general, uh, in, at least in this S&P. In the NQ, uh, M23, that is the, um, this is the uh, uh, NASDAQ June contract. It made a peak E, and there's a pattern that I call the dreaded H. Now, what is the dreaded H? The dreaded H is, if I can just find this right here, dreaded H, find it, there it is, dreaded H. It means sometimes you can go straight up or straight down. That's one thing. You can make a cup formation or an arch formation. That's two and three. Or you can have a combination. In this case, it's red because if this H fails at a peak A or B and takes out that left side low, you've got to be real careful because you've got only two to three bars in which to close above that to save the day. Otherwise, it could go quite a lot deeper. So what we're looking at here is that there's this little H pattern, went to a little A right there, and now I can put it, I uh, should wait for the uh, 9 to cross negative, but here's your gray A because it wasn't a, there's no confirmation of it. So it's an A minus because it failed. And now you can get almost a 1 to 1 to the downside. So that was a peak D. Now I never had a chance to draw uh, my left side, right side price time match, anything like that. And this went to peak A, peak B, C, and D. So let me show you this yet again. There's another peak A, peak B. I'm just counting the highs from the low bar, C, and there's your D, down arrow. And what did we get? Now, normally with a peak D and a down arrow in an arch formation, it doesn't go that much below, unlike just an A or a B that fails. It, it sort of stalls a little bit under it. This has gone a little bit more than a little bit under it. It's gone from 40, 14,000, say, uh, 466 area down to the 14, uh, 450s. So now it's almost, now you have to look at the 10 minute chart and say, hey, is this going to be, and this goes to the uh, Tiger Financial News Network, almost all the hosts talk about A to B equals C to D. I, I talk about it in a different way. I talk about it in the Chapman Way methodology I developed a long time ago uh, where I go, let me just expand that weight, make it nice and thick, and now we'll go to the downside where it has to do a one-to-one -one extension in the same angle, the same number of bars. Well, let's see what happens here. Is it starting to find some support? It hasn't gone one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. The MACD's weak, stochastic's weak, the on-balance volume's quite good, but the nine period has not closed under the 14. That says there's still internal strength. So if I was say, if it's, I think someone said they're going short, I'd just be watching this closely because the next move under 14,450 would be very negative. Now, using the same technique, remember I can take a blank chart I don't need all these technical indicators if I'm just using counting the peaks and troughs. Look, he has gold. So gold earlier on made a low right here in the 10-minute chart. This is a continuous contract. 
Uh, made a low back at 7. That was 5 o'clock on the uh, 7th. That was uh, 5 o'clock, 7. That's, that's last night in Eastern time. And then it went to peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D. Pulls back. Has this alternate count. Goes E slash A, F slash B, G slash C, and then it pulls back. Then it goes A, B, C. Here's your 200 period moving average. And Larry never uses moving averages, so this is something completely different. But look what happened. It sliced right through this, what is normally resistance or support, and went to a peak D, E, F. I haven't put that in because I haven't updated it. There's your F. And then it turns down and still hasn't technically given a down arrow but it's a down arrow based on time rather than price. And so gold at 20.9 uh, now has to be 1975 is the next support level and 1981, uh, 83 is your resistance. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman sitting for the one and only Larry Preservento. We'll be back in a moment. The Gold Report. As a precious metal gold is still king, it continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, let me just go in the, in the order of the questions that I just got. Um, FCX is Freeport McMorrow. This is copper and gold. Uh, actually, prop, copper, copper and other other metals, but I, basically it's a copper company. Um, made a, a leg C right at the 200 period exponential moving average in the daily is trading. FCX is trading at 37.73, up 16 cents. 
you can see how important this 200 period moving average has been support, then it's been resistance, then it's been support, then resistance. So right now it's resistance again. So if you are not in it, I'd be a little hesitant. You know, if you look at copper itself, uh, let me get there All right, one second. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll go. I heard the bell. Uh, oops, copper is HG. Here we go. Copper itself. Yeah, very nice move. But look, a peak A and a peak B and a peak C or a leg C in such a small move to the upside. I think it's doing quite nicely, but not good enough. So I'm just going to say that FCX uh, on, on a trading basis, and I'll be going to that corner in a moment, um, needs at 37.73. I think it's going to come back to this 200 period moving average. I think the 37.30s is going to kind of be a mid, mid range for the next couple of days. But I also see there's a much better chance that it's going to retest the um, 36, 36.30 area. And that's going to be key. If it can hold that and it's at a leg C, it could quickly just pop to a leg D. And that would make the 38.90s, uh, 38.30 to 38.90 will be the, the, actually even just one penny above that starts. Yeah, 38.31. 38, 32 starts a leg D if it happens in the next couple of days. And I suspect that that's going to be um, a resistance. So I'd be hesitant here. I just if you've done your homework and you really think that this is looking good and I think that it's improving, but the MACD in the, in the uh, weekly chart and the stochastic is still flat, it needs still needs a lot of work. But if you want to start your position now, I'd have a one and a quarter point stop. And if it goes to the 38.40s, I would just raise the stop. In fact, I'd try to keep the stop. I'd tighten it up, but I'd keep it there before I add any position. I need to see four sessions more to see if it's going to hold support. That's the most important thing. It is trying to move up. It's got a nice cup formation, most importantly. Um, and the gap, and it's, full, it's not full the gap much so this is good action. I'm just looking at the weekly, and the weekly suggests it needs a lot more work. That's all. Um, next question is, uh, let me just see if you don't mind. I'm going to go to right here to see what the bell was. We have Brent and Martinez. Brent, how are you? I'm doing great, Basil. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. So you came just in time for the commodity section of <laughs> this particular hour, and you would like to look at... We had talked about this previously. It's, it's going back probably uh, literally, I mean, maybe a month ago. We were looking at this on a little longer-term chart, and yes. I was seeing that there could be potential for a bottom in the future, and that happened you know, not too long ago, a few days ago. With a doji and candle so, on the uh, 1st of June, we're looking at Intrepid Potash IPI, 22.29 right now, up $0.08. Cents. And that doji candle came after the uh, peak A, peak B failure with the dreaded H pattern, and it did go down quite a bit. And now it's what it's done is it closed. This is the third session above the arch high of the 22nd of May of 20.48. So this, I was looking at FCX. This is a takeoff level on a daily basis is a lot nicer looking than the FCX. The monthly chart, whew, Needs a lot of work, and I'm going to ask you what you're doing, but I first want to show this. We had discussed this. This is just a beautiful pyramid shape. The the low that was made back in, um, I didn't use, yes, I did. Going to, this is a, a weekly chart, going back to January of 2021, at 21.92, um, there was a low on in May. It made a little arch formation, and then in May, the week of the 14th of May of 2021, it went to 22.82. And then it screamed to the upside. It went to 121.72. I would say 100 points uh, upside is excellent. Uh, April of 2022, about, uh, what is that, uh, one year later, weekly chart. But then one year later, what does it do? It tests on May, the week of the May the 12th, it goes to a low of 18.26, and then it makes that low that we're looking at right now, 17.23. That's what I call bar symmetry, just perfect bar symmetry. There's the Chapman Wave inside wedge target support line. Okay, now I'm going to ask you, what are you doing? What have you done? I'm just doing this with the options, Basil. 
I have uh, they're the uh, twenty dollar calls to go out to. I uh, have the Julys. So you have July. Okay. So this is going to be very interesting because I think IPI, if you're looking at a, a, a monthly chart, it's about six weeks you've got to go, maybe even more July. Oh, my, it's about seven weeks, actually. So if you're looking at that length of time, <clears throat> I would, knowing you, you're probably going to be out of it a lot sooner. But if you, gain, if you want to hold it because the weekly chart, which made it, a, a tr it's a potential this week, a trough G. Um, if you if you're going to hold it, the resistance at 2373, which is the weekly 40 period exponential moving average, which it's hit many times, but the last time it actually closed above it and it only did that once, was in the week of August the 26th, 2022, and before that was the week of the high of April of 2022 at 121.72. Since then, if you just use this one indicator, the 14 period exponential moving average, only one week did it close above that. Otherwise, every single week, even if it went above, oh no, it did it for a fraction of the week of the 21st of October, just momentarily. And look at this, every single, that'll be the first time if it can close above 2372, let's call it 2380. If it can close above 2380, that'll be the first time in a long, long time. So the, that's the, that is the resistance that we're looking at. So on a short-term basis, the last time it, it gapped down was on the uh, 4th of May, 24.30 was the high. So 24.30 is above that 23. Uh, 24.30 is above the 2372 14 period exponential moving average. So now you have a lot of configurations. So I'm going to do this if you if you've got a moment. I'll just do this here. Going to that high. If I was to do a left side right side price time match, I can't do to the low. Well, I could, but it takes it out too far. That to me would be too far. So now I have to use a particular candle, and I'm just going to try to see if I can do it here. Yeah, it's too soon. Yeah, that takes you right to where we are. So I am using this candle right here, the candle of the uh, 26th of May. Um, yeah, there we are. So I'm going to use that. I'm just going to click on the right side to give you what I'm looking at. Yes, this says by the week. Oh, that's, ne that's not two weeks time. By the 20th of June, the gap high of the 4th, that's at 24.30, that would be a target. And let me just do this across ways right here. There it is. Oh, and it's right, at, okay, can you hold on a minute? I've got a couple of things I want you to just show you. Yeah, no problem, Basil. Okay, folks, we've got Brent in Martinez, California. We're looking at IPI Intrepid Potash in the Potash area. I'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. 
These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. So we're back and we're looking at uh, IPI, which is Intrepid uh, Potash Inc. in the potash business. And we're looking at the chance that um, IPI holding even now as the market started to pull back from the highs. The Dow is now only up 129, was up quite a bit more. And the S&P is only up 14, was up quite a bit more earlier on. So this is not given back much at all. So it's saying it's almost independent of the market right now. So I like the action. I think you have fabulous entry point, and especially if you're doing it in, in options. So this is what I'm looking at. It's at resistance. It hit, it's hit it twice now. This is Japan Wave inside track. Oh, sorry, this is the inside wedge target resistance line because it's green going up. So that just says it might take a little bit. You've got 50 period expansion moving average uh, resistance at 22.70. Um, so far, this is very good action, but it's only leg A and there's there's a chance that today, the high of yesterday was 22.42, today is 22.41. If it doesn't go to 42, but stays here, that's going to be a peak A. But if it, if it hits the same level as yesterday, that continues the floating letter A. And that's very good for an A to take off like this. With This is almost a Chapman Wave um, squash pattern with the MACD and the stochastic. I don't want to get too carried away. But the speed with which it's gone from negative in the stochastic to really positive at 90 percent and the nine over the 14 and the MACD. This is just says it's got fabulous support in the 2130 to 20.40 area. I like it. I think it's a really nice. But I don't think it's this is the big move to the upside. I think it's trying to establish some kind of base. It looks very much like the Eiffel Tower in the monthly chart, straight up to the 121 area and then straight down again. So I think this is really important work to try to form a base. You've still got that gap down, that candle that we were looking at from the 4th of May. So I like what I'm seeing. I, I would love to see what it's doing maybe Tuesday of next week. Has it, has it filled the gap? Has it gone below 21.25? Or is it actually struggling to, to, to hold that green line as a magnet? to keep moving high. So far, it's so good. So the way I'm looking at it, you've got about another week and a half or so, maybe even two weeks, to try to get to 24, uh, what did I say it was, 24, 35, 20, 24.30, 24.30. It, it sounds like it's, oh, it's just a little hop, skip and a jump, but we might consolidate a little bit here. So far, it's acting very nicely. I hope that helps you. It does, of course, Basil, as always. It it's a big help, and I just, uh, yeah, I've got this one. I've got some others on my list that I, I'm starting to dip my toe in, the, and I have been in the steel area and, and just yeah, some other spots that I have my eye on and did do one of the, uh, you know, the, the kind of quick trade this morning on the SPY again and, and uh, you know, already out of that one. But, it's, yeah, all in all, it's been good. 
All right. Congratulations. That's always nice to hear. So thank you so much for calling, and good luck with this one. All right. Thank you so much, Basil. Have a great day. You take you care. Th thank you very much. So, folks, just to get back to this, I'm going to go to natural gas. I was asked about that. So, look, the ICO NQ, you remember we made that peak E, and I said this is that dreaded H pattern, peak A minus, because it took out that little left side low. And now you can see, the once that nine period moving average cost negative at 120, this one, uh, at 118 this afternoon, Eastern time, it's still pink. And uh, that, that just tells you this is very weak right now. And that 200 period moving average of 14,409 in the 10-minute chart, that's going to be key support. I'm, I'm seeing signs right here that it's attempting to try to find some support, but it hasn't yet. All right, now a question came in about natural gas. So natural gas, uh, let me just go here for a moment. Uh, this is the continuous contract. I'm sorry. I like to go to a continuous contract. I know most people would never trade from a continuous contract because you want your actual contract that you have. Not only that, prices will be different at different times of the month. Uh, so that's made that dreaded H pattern right there. All right, now I want to go to, I'll keep this on here, ESM23. Just keep it there. Oh, look at that. I drawn this in as a left side, right side potential price time match earlier on. Um, using a particular candle as the midpoint, the fulcrum for the left side, right side mirror image. And here we are. This is the low that was made at 12.03 this afternoon in the E-mini at 42.83.50. We're trading at 80. We've just hit 82.83.50. Done it exactly right there. And here's your Kevin Wave inside wedge target support line. Usually I make it red and have time to do that. So I'll make it pink right now dashed right there okay see I uh, a little bit there on bounce volumes trying to turn around stochastic and this is where the most important this is where it should rally if it's going to rally 42.92 has to be reached I would say within the next uh, 10 or 15 minutes rather than 42.82 all right here we go again okay finally I'm getting to my natural gas here we go natural gas is NG this is the continuous contract uh, there we go. So this candle that we're looking at right now, it's up 0.005 at 2.334. See this this doji candle? See the nine period moving average in the daily chart still very weak. The black, that's the black moving average right there, the 14 period moving average. This is the pink turns to pink when it crosses negative. It's green when it's positive. The MACD histogram is improving, but it still isn't even close to turning up. And the stochastic at 19% is under 20. I, it just says it's still in the weak category, but it is rallying. On balance volume has been very good. But the weekly charge, you see when the MACD moves like this and the price doesn't conform, doesn't rally with it, it means next time there's weakness in the MACD, it can drag the price lower. And I'm always nervous. Look at the stochastic rated beautifully from the single digits to almost 20% in the weekly chart. 19.81, and yet the price is making lower lows. I'm Something is wrong with natural gas. And I just say for the people who are trading it, I know some of you have had short-term trades. That's fantastic. Just be really careful. There's just something is going on that is either there's a glut, there's something going on. And all I can say is UNG, uh, which is the United States Natural Gas Fund, doesn't show it doesn't show up all these different things as clearly um, as the others. So this is a G, and I can't go to a G slash C because it went, made a lower low. This is actually a G slash B. Ah, oh, look at that monthly chart. Look at the weekly chart. You know, you could you could trade this. And there's going to be a point. I, when it made this inverted V-shaped candle, this Eiffel Tower right here in the daily chart, going from 610, I don't know if it's still 610 as a continuous contract. Yeah, 610 to that peak C failure on the 19th of May to 7.72. And then gaps down. It couldn't even have it had a little dreaded H pattern right there and failed. This is just not good. So this is the right side that now has to. The only way that I would feel very comfortable about, say, buying the UNG is if the price of natural gas, I'm going back to the core, which is the root of the, this is the continuous contract, trading at 2.336 right now. 
actually starts to trade in the 250s and it can hold that for a whole week. That'll be, that'll be the best thing that I could see. Then I'll say, you know what? I think you've, you've raised the base of support. At this point, it's still at the stage where anything can happen. Talk about anything can happen. I'll be right back. Got a couple of questions that came in that I'll be looking at them as soon as I return. Basil Chapman sitting in for Larry Pizzavento's hour. Dow's up 130, S&P's up 13. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. We have exciting news, Tigers. This June, Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle will be hosting two webinars, providing insight into his renowned market timing methodologies. On June 8th, Tim will delve into the S&P 500, teaching sentiment indicators, identifying market bottoms and divergence, and so much more. On June 15th, Tim pivots to the gold market, taking a look at cycle analysis, ratio studies, advanced decline indicators, and other important tools for analyzing this sector. Sign up today on TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. I'm just looking to see if there were some questions here that I missed. I uh, didn't do that. Um... Uh, IWO, IWO. So just let me do this. I don't know what the IWO is. I'm not sure if it's a, a stock. IWO is I short the Russell. Oh, short the Russell. Uh, jumping in, jumping. Okay, so a couple of things. Uh, I, I still like the IWM. I think it's going higher. This is the chart of the IWM. I don't think it's made a top just yet. The stochastics at 91. This is going to be bad news. Maybe it's tomorrow. I don't know. But I think we're really close to some kind of a short-term top. I would like to think that the Dow is going to give it to me. I wanted to show you some quickly. Uh, look, uh, wheat is just stuck in the lower range. But look at soybeans. Soybeans are starting to move steadily higher at 1366, making 1340s, the 1340s really important support. Corn 
uh, has gone to a leg B, made a peak B. It's acting much better. It's stuck at the 200-period moving average. If we can get to 630 on the continuous contract, that's good. I want to do LC, which is uh, um, live uh, cattle, making a peak D. I think it's making a short-term top right here at 172. I think it's going to, one. the 160s are going to be really important support to hold. So I just wanted to go through a couple of things. And then real quickly, as we were about to go off, and, and wrap the session up. Don't forget my news. That is the uh, opening call. We've just had a stock that's doubled. Uh, SYM, oops, uh, wrong, wrong uh, ESM trading at, uh, is this a daily chart? No, yeah, it is. Right here, symbolic. I, it has to be so overboard at this particular level. It hit 42.92. We're in the 21s, so it's had a double. Now at leg E, you got to watch it closely. The whole IA, artificial intelligence area, this is in it. I'm going to be watching it very closely. So I'm going to just wrap it up here and say have a great rest of the day. Hey, Tim Ward at 4 o'clock, don't forget, he does his first of two webinars. Should be a fabulous one. He does terrific work. Have a great day. If the Dow can get to 173 this afternoon, that'll give a good close. We'll see what happens. Have a great day. Stay tuned for great programs.